So we want to do something like ticker is equal to get so we type in the tickers and for ticker and tickers um, get histories. So we can do something like that and ticker. And say we want to specify some period of data that we want to get. So we we'll do def get history and get ticker here. So to implement this function, we're going to need a data source and we're going to use uh, the Yahoo Finance API. But if you don't know what Yahoo Finance already does, well, we can simply Google it. So you can see inside the Y Finance API, we're going to have historical data that is available. And what this library does is that it will do the scraping and some of the convenient mathematical computations for you. So for example, you can see open high load flows and adjusted close, right? So there are adjustments for splits and dividends, and nicely enough, this library is going to do the computation for us, right? So we're going to install it using it, and then you can take in the info, you can obtain the info, you can get historical data, you can also get a lot of other details, but we're interested for now in this particular function. We can also look for um, other parameter inputs to the get historical data function, right? So we'll import it like that, and you can actually obtain um, other functionalities. So, for instance, um, how do I get? Okay, here. Um, it takes as parameters some input, right? You can either specify a period, such as a uh, one year period, or you can also specify the start and end period using a daytime object. So, this is what we're going to use. You can also specify the interval of data if you're interested in daily data. And as we mentioned before, we can also ask the API. We can ask the library to do the um, price adjustment for us. But that's nice. So, Let's say we want to obtain the data. We want to obtain the data from 2010 to 2020, right? So we're going to import a data time library. So let's say we want to start from the 1st of January and um, all the way until 2020. At this point, I want to also mention something else, which happens to be about time zone awareness in date times. So well, if I print this particular um, objects we're going to get this data object but as zero 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 is actually fairly ambiguous because this time in Tokyo can be different from the time in US or in Europe so in order to have unambiguousness about the data we're going to try to standardize in our entire application all the date times to be time zone aware and to be time zone aware means there's no ambiguousness about the time zone because when we specify a time zone when we say that it's 8 p.m in Tokyo time there is no ambiguity about that so for us, we're going to use what is known as the UTC time. So UTC is a standardized time zone. So I'm going to say that the time zone info is going to be ITC.UTC. We're going to do this right here also. And if we print this, well, we're going to get the time awareness here. This is with respect to the UTC period. All right. So say so we want to obtain data from a start time. So end time, and we want to obtain data for a one-day period. So this is an optional parameter; it defaults to one day. You can also specify other periods. Okay, and um, it's installed in library. So Python three point eight, which m install y finance. For me, I already have it installed. So okay, let's import y finance. Okay, and y finance dot ticker. Um, we already saw how to use it. So okay, we can click at this thing. So it'll take it. And we can call dot history on this object. Right, so let's go ahead and call dot history on that. If I already specified um, in terms of the daytime object, the period that we want, um, we know the interval we want is a daily period. And we're going to say we want to adjust the data. So, okay, let's try to make this a little bit more readable. Right. So let's try to see what this does. So print, yeah, that's 
Let's see what this does. So I'm gonna call this function ticker, period start, period end, and the optional parameter, I'm just gonna let it default to a daily data. So let's call this function. And we have open, high, low, close, and volume, as well as dividends and stock splits. And we have uh, the date as the index. So that's great. Um, let's think about what kind of data frame we want to pass between the different components of our application. So let's say we want a, um, a data frame with, say, um, index, right? And then we want a data type column. Um, then we want open, high, low, close, volume. And we don't want the dividends and stock splits. So if we want this particular, um, so we want this to be an integer. Uh, we want this to be a time zone aware date time column, and then we want all of this to be floating point integers. Oh, so we want this to be floating point, and we want this to be um, an integer or float. So with that in mind, we can try to say um, arrange it. So if we take how do we set index? Right. So let's see what resetting the index does for us. So if we set an index, then we'll see that the date column. In the date index basically becomes a column and we replace this with integers. So okay, that's nice. So we can put this on top and we want to rename the columns so that it has the column names that we want. So D that dot rename. The rename takes in a parameter of columns, which has which is a dictionary of the remapping that we want to perform. So for example, we want to rename date to date time. So this is going to give us okay, let's do that for open highlight close volume. Let's see what we can get from there. Open, high, low, close, and volume. Okay, so let's put this open. Up, high, low, close, and volume. Okay, so let's take a look at what the data frame is now. Right, so let's run this again. So we have nice um, column names, and we want to remove these last two columns. Okay. Uh, we want to say df equals to df drop two columns, right? So columns equals to dividends and stock split. So these two columns we don't need. All right. Okay, this will throw an error if the two columns don't exist. So we're going to say if df is empty, if the data frame does not return any data, then we're going to return right away instead of going to this logic. Okay. And if it is if there is indeed data, then as we said we want this date time column to be time aware. So at this point you can see our date time object is just um it's just a date, but we want it to be time zone aware. So we can access the date time object through using this um variable. And then we use the method called time zone localize and set it to the UTC time zone. Okay. So these are just methods inside the and this module. So let's now see what the data frame does for us. Exactly, this is exactly what we want. Right? We have a uh, daytime aware column, then we have open high logos and volume, and we don't have anything else. So that's nice. And so we want to um, reassign the daytime column as. Going to reassign the daytime column as uh, the index. So what this is going to do is it's going to set this column as the index. And what the drop does says that what the drop equals to true means is that we can just throw away these integers instead of so instead of swapping this to the index and the column, we're just going to let this be the column and throw away the original index. So if we do this, then we're going to get this data frame. So this is actually precisely what we want. So we can return the data frame here, and this is very nice. Now we can do something like that. So, in different figure, yeah. And very, um, just like that, we can now obtain the um, open high locus and volume data for um, any ticker. Right. So, that's something that we managed to get out of the way. So, we want to use this to basically build our data set. Right. So, We want to do this for all the tickers. Um, actually, one thing that you realize is that um, we're going to do this in sequence. So, if we do this in sequence, let's say one request takes in 
half a second, the entire request is going to take 250, about 250 seconds for all 500 tickers. And then it's going to be a very painful wait. And we're going to have to wait more than four minutes just to get our data. So in order to get past this um, slow part of the process, we're going to talk about um, a little bit more advanced topic in programming called multi-threading. And inside the next lecture, we're going to see precisely how to do multi-threading in Python.